What's up everybody, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna to talk about if the Centauri Carbon should be considered the best beginner 3D printer on the market. Okay, so let's just get straight into this, right? The Centauri Carbon is only $299. That itself makes it one of the best bangs for your buck, at least on what it promises to deliver. So far, I have about 233 hours of print time on the Centauri Carbon, which I think is a pretty good amount to make like a, a sound decision on if you guys should pick up this printer. But first, let me walk you through some of the issues I've had with this printer. Um, it's not to scare you away. I just want to make everyone aware. I'm being very transparent. I'm getting nothing to make this video, right? This is completely unpaid. Guys, I, I'm barely crossing the thousand, you know, subscriber mark. I'm not, uh, you know, any big time person that's been given this printer for free. And I've gained like most of my subscribers in the last month. So let's get into it. First, when I got this printer, right, the back. I showed this in another review that I had. The back was completely dented. So Elegoo sent me a replacement top, which Elegoo customer service has been great. So I'm very confident in saying that if you have any issues with this printer, Elegoo customer service is gonna help you out. While I was replacing this top, however, though, the, the stock hinges on the door did break and they didn't have like a stock hinge. I don't, they said they couldn't send me the CAD files for the hinge. That's not what I wanted. I just wanted to see if they could send me a replacement hinge because one of my screws was stripped and it just broke off. But I said, hey, don't worry about it. And I printed these hinges as well. And actually these are of a benefit now because they allow me to open the Centauri Carbon door all the way. As far as prints, I do have a video on the channel that actually shows me 3D printing some minis on the carbon. That's only with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So it, it they did come out great. So not to spoil that video, I printed like really small, crazy detailed minis, I feel like. Um, and I really tested the carbon on its limits to print that. It's only going to get better when we get the 0.2 nozzles available for the carbon. So if you're looking at minis, I mean, by, by the time you pre-order this, the actual nozzles that are 0.2 are going to be coming out for the carbon, um, or at least by the time you get your pre-order. And then you can actually use this, I think, to print some really quality minis, similar to what you would see on like a Bamboo A1. So one of the other issues I had with this printer was the anomaly issue. So it would just randomly stop printing and it would say like a sensor anomaly has occurred. What Elegoo had me do to fix the anomaly sensor issue was they had me take this and flip it up on its back and I had to take off the bottom panel and there was a circuit board. So I do have some shorts on that if you want to check them out. And they wanted me to make sure just that all the wires were properly secured. For the most part, all the wires seemed properly secured for me, but... Ever since I did that last troubleshooting step, I haven't had any issue with the anomaly sensor come up. And normally this would happen with long prints. And I've done two 14 hour prints and I haven't had that issue at all. Um, I also did to fix that issue, I tightened down the USB-C cable that was on the top. Um, that, that didn't seem to fix anything. It was a little loose, so you wanna check that if you get this printer. Um, but overall, that, that didn't seem like the issue with the anomaly sensor. As far as like complete issues that are Elegoo's fault per se, or something bad that they did was there, um, I think that's about it. One gripe I do have though with this filament sensor on the side, now you can't really see it from here, but this, the filament sensor is on the side of the printer. Um, it has caused some issues as far as printing just empty air. And when I say printing empty air, basically what happens is, a lot of filament rolls, even Elegoo's itself, like this one, they'll actually be tied or like snapped to the side of the cardboard spool and it doesn't pull it off the spool. So the sensor still senses that it has filament running into it and it just kind of completely prints just air. Now that can happen with any, literally any printer that has a side filament sensor that's not just exclusive to the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Um, but it is something to be aware of if you are a beginner 3D printer. So let's get into like some of the positives. For the most part, this is a quick printer. Anything that I want to print on this printer, being a Core XY, it's going to be faster than the Bamboo A1. So if you're someone who likes the need for speed, this definitely beats out the Bamboo A1 in that category. As far as minis, when I printed the minis and I did that video, they, they came out great. I really didn't have anything to complain about. Uh, everything looked good. I, I didn't really see any issues as far as like, I don't even know what issues I would say. Like it, they printed perfectly fine. You know, that was just stock settings too. I've only used the Elegoo slicer to slice all of those, just stock organic tree supports. It's just the way you orientate, orientate 
a lot of prints is going to be the way and the result of them and the quality. The bed adhesion has been perfectly fine. I only use Elgu filament anyway because on Amazon you can get it for like four for 42 bucks. So it ends up coming out to close to $10 a roll and I can get Amazon Prime. So the stock settings with the Elgu filament, they seemed a little funny with only being a 35 Celsius um, bed temp, but it, it's it's worked perfectly fine with the stock plate. So I do like that you can save two beds in here so you can do each side. I mean, theoretically, you could even put a different bed plate in there, but I only use the stock stuff. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to upgrade these and go super fancy. I'm really just grading the printer as it comes out of the box because I think when you, when you buy a 3D printer, I don't think you should have to buy all these parts and really customize it to make it work the way it should. It should just print out of the box, right? It should just give you beautiful prints right out of the box, easy to use. And that's what I'll say about the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. It's, it's very easy to use. Summarizing the out-of-box experience, um, it only took about 40, 45 minutes to get set up. It does have a long calibration uh, period and then you're good to go. I'm hoping so far this review isn't boring you, and if it's not, guys, please go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe down below. So going back to the positives of the printer, again, anytime I had an issue, I do think it's a real positive that a company is really willing to work with you. They kept open my ticket. Um, the only thing is, is that the time zone difference, so if you end up having an issue with the carbon, which you may, I actually think that most of the issues that I've been in this first batch because I, I ordered this like literally 30 seconds after launch. I saw it was $2.99. I said, hey, like you can't beat this. Let me let me go ahead and try this out. And honestly, I think I would have ordered it up to $4.99, which is crazy to me thinking about it now. Think about this, I guess the real question is, is the Elegoo Centauri Carbon the best beginner 3D printer on the market? I believe that I can confidently say that it is the best 3D printer for beginners on the market for the price point. I think the Bamboo A1 may be the best beginner printer just because it's a little more just plug and play. You After the setup, like the Elgu, I've had to tinker with it, but I think there is a positive in that. You're tinkering with the Elgu Centauri Carbon just enough to teach you some good lessons when it comes to 3D printing, but it's not gonna be so frustrating that you can't, like you, you just don't want to 3D print anymore. I think when, when it comes to the frustrations that some of us have had in the past with 3D printing. Like I had a, a CRS 10 Pro V2. That printer was $599 or like $500 or $630 I paid. And, you know, Creality didn't really, I don't know how to say it. Like there wasn't as much support back then. So it was a little harder to get it. Like if you get the carbon, definitely join the Facebook carbon group or the Centauri carbon Facebook group. Um, if you don't have a Facebook, I think it's worth creating one just for that. Um, but going back, I bought the CRS 10 Pro V2 and I just couldn't get the thing to work. The information wasn't readily available. Um, maybe I was missing out on some Facebook groups at the time. People said, hey, this is the most print ready printer um, at the time right out of the box. So that's why I paid the $630. And so I was left with like just a paperweight. I think I printed one Mandalorian helmet with that thing. And with this, I have 233 hours. I printed countless minis already. I've printed a whole bunch of life-size battle droid parts with it. Like I, I just have no complaints with the print quality and how easy it is to use this printer. Now, of course, right, going back, I did have some issues with it, but I, it's gonna give you what you want for $299. Now, a lot of people compare this to the P1S. I think that's a fair comparison, but at the end of the day, if I'm paying $630 for a P1S, give me two of these. I will take two printers because you know what? I can print a life-size battle droid faster. Like I could have completed it in a third less time if I had another printer. Or if you're gonna compare this to like the Carbon, which I don't think is a fair comparison. They're completely different printers. I would take three of these. I would try to make it work with some of the enclosed stuff that like this doesn't have the heated chamber that you're talking about with a carbon to print some of these high-end heated materials, which actually I don't have experience with. I don't print with ABS. I don't, I've only printed with PETG like one time. So am I the right person to be doing this video? Who knows, but I print in PLA. I printed my life-size battle droid. You know, I love to create things. I just wanna print. I just want something that works. I'm just using PLA mainly due to safety concerns, right? I don't have an, a proper enclosure for this. I don't just want to print ABS in here. Um, but the printer works. And again, I think you're just going to learn just enough when it comes to 3D printing of using the Centauri Carbon. You'll learn just enough 
that it gets you in the mindset of figuring out the issues yourself, a little critical thinking when it comes to 3D printing. Like, hey, what did I do wrong? Um, what can I do better? Maybe you'll learn more about the belts in time. We really don't know how well this is going to last. But I mean, after two, 233 hours of printing, I don't have any issues elsewhere. So at the end of the day, I think that this is the best printer you can get in the you know 299 range. Um, I do think that the A1 is probably the overall, actually not overall, um, better printer. I would still say the Centauri Carbon is the better printer if you get a good one, right? So if you don't have a lemon right out of the box or whatever it is, then I think the Centauri Carbon is better than the A1. It prints faster. You may have to do more maintenance. I have about 400 hours on my A1 and I have not done a single thing. I probably should lubricate the belt, but I haven't. But I think this is going to last just as long. The thing is, though, I'm very confident that if something goes wrong with my carbon, that Elegoo is going to step up and take care of it for me. And that's just from personal experience. I've had the Elegoo Jupiter, um, the 6K, and they stepped up. They replaced my screen because I had a bad screen when I was resin printing a long time ago. I think I even have some of those Elegoo videos like up on the channel from a long time ago. Some of them I made private because, you know, newer stuff. I'm only FDM printing right now. Uh, I have boxes or up here is a Elegoo Saturn that I was using before, but you know, I've been 3D printing a while, and I think that for $299, i am a budget guy. Like, I I can't ever see myself paying over $1,000 for a 3D printer unless YouTube pays for it for me. Like, I just, I can't, I can't see it at all. So, I think for everyone who's wondering, should I buy this for $299, or should I buy the Bamboo A1, or should I buy the K1? Um, or I believe there's, what is it? Uh, flash forge is the other one. I think, I think your best bet is to go with the Centauri carbon. Now, some of you might be triggered because maybe you love your K one, but it's all about personal experience. So my answer is not going to be the same as anybody else's answer. Well, I guess, you know, there's only really a couple answers. It could be, but my opinion is not going to be the same. You know, my experience with these printers is not going to be the same. You know, I had a rough experience starting out with the carbon and I still love the printer. It does the job. It prints fast. Um, you know, the sensor stuff is a little, uh, it's a little annoying sometimes because I have to make sure that when I'm at the end of a filament roll that it's picking it up properly. But overall, you know, I'm very happy with my money. I spent $299. You know, I was basically a beta tester and I'm still happy with my $299. I think this printer is going to be a staple in the workshop for a while. Um, I hope I get another printer soon so I can speed up some of these life size 3d prints. You know, I want to get my droid factory going. Um, but, uh, again, 233 hours into it, I, I can safely recommend this as, uh, probably the best 3d printer, at least, you know, that I can see you buying again, though, I don't have experience with any other printer in that range, like the K one or the flash forge. Um, even some of the Neptune series, you could probably pick up for like less than $200. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to the, the normal Centauri for $199. I think that's going to be a steal because you don't need these enclosures. And if it's the same printer without the enclosures, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be golden. So actually that might be the best beginner 3d printer because it's only $199 and beginner 3d printers have to be cheap for me. I don't want to go spend, you know, $600. The P1S, yeah. Is it a great 3d printer for 600 dollars yeah but you know what if you're a beginner pick up two of these do yourself a favor um because you're going to be wishing you had another printer when you're printing parts um overall that's kind of all i got to say on this guys um, i'm going to make some troubleshooting videos based on like what i actually did um underneath for some people um that were asking for but Overall, check out all the videos on the channel, guys. Make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions, I reply to every single comment. If you're asking me a question, I see every comment. I look at them. I spend my time on the YouTube trying to get better. Um, if you have any suggestions for videos, also go ahead and let me know down below. And we'll see you guys next time. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.